Millions of Americans suffer from osteoarthritis, a painful joint disease that wears down cartilage. It can severely impact mobility. Now, pain medications only mask the symptoms, and surgical options have risks of infection and immune rejection as well. And University of Connecticut researchers believe the future could be in a tiny electrical spark and a simple injection. So with me is John Lai, the CEO of Pet Vivo, and Lean Lei, the co-founder of Piezo Bio. To explain this uh, study, how it relates to your business. And I know, Ling, we talked a while ago, um, but in case somebody missed that, can you reintroduce yourself and tell us what you do? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ling Lei. I am the co-founder and CEO of PSO Bio Membrane, or short, uh, PSO Bio. Uh, this is my second business. And then uh, PSO Bio Membrane is the company spinning out of University of Connecticut. Um, the other co-founder, Professor Tang Nguyen, is the one who is in the news today, which we can get into later. Yeah, no, I look forward to that. It sounds very interesting. Uh, but what is the latest update since the last time we talked? In the last update um, relating to Piezo Bio and Pet Vivo, we are happy to report that we have a lot of good news on the technical update. Uh, from my team, um, we actually figure out the way to combine the technology, the nanofiber technology from Piezo Bio with the core technology from Pet Vivo. John, I hope that you heard the same thing from your team. Yeah, our uh, scientific team was really happy with the results we saw in the small animal study. And now the update from the large animal study is very um, encouraging. We, we, we believe as we translate through the FDA process that uh, we can get to the human side of the study approvals uh, pretty quick, I think, because of the fact we're putting device and device together and getting that regenerative result with no adverse events. And what is the big news today? I am happy to report that the National Institute of Health awarded Professor Tang Nguyen, our co-founder, with more than $2 million in research money. Piezo Bio successfully secured the license for any future development of this technology. So we hope that we can translate this technology outside of the lab, working with Pet people, hopefully we can bring this technology to human as well. And that's why we're here. Yeah. Well, yeah. So we have the expertise in manufacturing large scale. Our production facility actually has very high ISO clearances for five, seven, and eight. And we were very comfortable in making because it's very similar to spring, we're just taking spring and adding their nanofiber technology into the spring particles. And by them using a ultrasound wave, it creates electrical field. That electrical field causes attraction of growth hormones, enzymes, and other materials that help in the process to regenerate the cartilage as well as tissue damage. Oh, fascinating. And thank you for that explanation, because I was going to ask, like, how does that work with the spark exactly? So now, are there, is there any a preliminary data on this yet? Um, yes. And um, um, to be honest, I would love to add on what John said um, uh, early on, uh, a little bit more on the technical side. So for all scientists and then for all technologists out there, um, this technology or this nanofiber is the poly l lactate acid or for short, PLLA, and um, how we do it. We mix this with the um, um, spring technology from Pet Vivo, and then we add a little bit of nanoparticle um, uh, on top of that too. Think about like a, a little bit of salt and pepper on how we are making things more um, spicy, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the core, at the core, when activated, the joint movement, all the orange sounds similar to John said before, the nanofiber, the core technology, generate the electrical charge. And that actually mimic the body natural bioelectric signal. And that's how we're promoting the catalyst regeneration. Well, that's absolutely fascinating. So again, congratulations for you know making progress on this. What does the early data show? Um, in the preliminary data that um, uh, we are having, uh, obviously coming out of University of Connecticut, 
um, in the rapid model that we have right now, we introduce the catalyst damage. We inject some of the gel that we have containing obviously the nanomaterial, containing the nanofiber, and then we follow by the ultrasound five times a week, led to a significant growth of functional catalyst. And then that all happened in two months. So imagine that um, we are actually having the matching results from the solid scaffold implant, but without the significant requiring for the surgery. Imagine that. And so what makes this better than current treatments? Um, from our perspective, um, looking at how the um, technology go is minimally invasive, it's cell-free, it's drug-free, it's biodegradable. We hope that we can avoid any complication and then cause of surgery, scaffold, or even sperm cell therapy. But then again, what we have is actually the technology in the lab. That's why we need to work with John. That's why we need to work with Pet Vivo in order to really bring this technology out to the market. Okay, makes sense. So what is next then for this project? I am currently in um, Asia. I am talking with um, multiple other partners outside of um, uh, US as well. And then we really hope that the, um, the partnership between Piezo Bio and Pet Vivo, we look forward to working with any businesses or technical partner to optimize the manufacturing process for our own nanofiber. And then hopefully later on, we can combine with the spring nano, uh, and later on, we can combine with the uh, spring manufacturing that uh, Pet Vivo has. And John, from your perspective, what's next? Well, we're excited to move forward with them on those basis because if you look at the US market for joint replacements, it's about 12 billion a year. And if you look at it globally, it's 33 billion a year. And can you imagine the benefit to the healthcare industry if you can reduce the number of joint replacements that's needed, like hip and knee, because the hip replacement's $50,000 just for the surgery. Then you have the downtime for rehab. So overall, the cost is probably closing in on 70,000 to 80,000. Our injection is going to be significantly lower, and it also allows a situation where the patient doesn't have a long recovery time and rehab time. So if if you can cut into that and save the healthcare system a major cost component, because we have all the drivers in our favor, the demographics are saying we're all getting older, and everybody that's getting older is going to have joint issues. It's you know, it, it's the only thing you can count on in this world is that. There's going to be more joint replacements. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it sounds easier on the patient as well. So um, very exciting, Ling and John, uh, these early preliminary results. And I wish you the best of luck. And I'm sure we'll get an update on that. Thank you, Jane. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Jane. Thanks. Thank you.